morning. How are we? Good. How many of you joined us at Abravanel Hall last week for Easter? Didn't you have a fun time? Yes, it was amazing. It was so fun to be there. We're happy to be back here and celebrating and get to worship for another week. Yes? Yes? Awesome. Well, we want to invite you to stand up if you want to. You don't have to, but we invite you to stand up. Let's pray before we get into it. Lord, thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for gathering us together today and just another week that we have an opportunity or maybe it's not another week, Lord. Maybe it's just this moment right now that we get to worship you, Lord. Let us take advantage of just being able to come together with one voice to sing to you and all the things that you have done for us, Lord. Lord, we want to honor you. We want to praise you and we just want to give it to you, Lord. Lord, help us to not be distracted this morning. Let us to put away all the things that are going on in our brains that don't need to be there and let's focus on you. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we give you this time. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. You guys awake now? Are you ready to continue in this time of worship? I'm ready, so let us do continue in worship. Feel free to continue standing to be seated, however it is that God is showing you to worship this morning.
God, we just thank you that you are, you were, and you are to come, Lord. Thank you that you are here with us today, God. And Lord, thank you that you are, you're never changing, Lord. Thank you that um, no matter the crazy things that are happening in our lives, Lord, the doubts, the fears, the frustrations that we might have, God, that you, um, Lord, that you never change, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord, as your word says in Hebrews 13. And I just pray that we would meditate on that today, Lord and that we would just keep you in the forefront of our minds and that we would just be able to worship you freely without any distractions. We say these things in your name.
Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Sing out, Lord, I come, I confess. I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart.
it's so true. We do need you every hour, every minute, every second, Lord. There's nothing that we can do without you, Lord. God, thank you for being our strength and our weaknesses, Lord. Lord, thank you for taking our brokenness and mending it and making us new and doing something with us, Lord. Lord, we thank you so much for this time of worship. As we open your word today, may you teach us something new, Lord. Lord, we love you, we honor you, we praise you. We give you all the glory today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Welcome to Calvary, everyone. I'm Leslie. I'm doing the announcements today. First off, if you guys are going to be in the New Believer class, it's starting right now. is the book you need. It's in our deli. So you can uh, go right over to the adult ed. They're getting uh, well underway right now. And I've noticed a lot of few faces out there. So if you're joining us from our Easter service, we just want to welcome you. On the back of the chairs are our connect cards. We would love to connect with you. If you want a pastor to call you, uh, if you just need prayer, uh, fill that out and we will definitely be in touch with you. Alrighty, well, one of our great announcements that we got coming up is, I have a lot of papers in my hand today, <laughs> is a Friday night movie night, April 26th. We're going to have a movie uh, right here at Calvary. Come on over. It's going to be Southern Gospel. I don't know if you guys have seen that yet, but come and join us. It'll be at 7 p.m. right here. And then I've got a special assignment for you guys. It is... It actually comes with a blessing. Who's, who's ready for that? Anyone want to do? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, I want to encourage you guys. This Wednesday, we are going to just worship the whole time. So 630, come right here. I would love to see you guys invite someone. It is just going to be such a great time to come into the presence of the Lord. Um, we will have a prayer team here. So we really want to encourage you just to come and uh, join us for a full night of worship. All right, well, our spotlight of the month is actually Calvary Thrift Store. Yay, we need a cheer for that, yes. Um, let me set my papers down here. All righty. We got, uh, we, looking back at, uh, in the Tribune, 11 years ago this month, uh, Calvary Thrift Store was opened. And I know, can you believe that? And, and I'm just going to read a little bit what the... Um, what they wrote about us, but they were like, this is a ministry of people with a heart of service, giving their time to help the community. They have three employees and the rest are volunteers. And I'll tell you today, we still um, uphold what they wrote, that we are a community of service. I'm glad to say that we now have 31 volunteers and we have 23 employees. And yes, we are so blessed to... Um, we have a lot of part-time employees there, but it is a great way that we can um, provide for our community in so many ways. Uh, so you'll see out front the, the table there. You know, we the Lord blesses us. That place is sacred ground. I am telling you, if you get any time that you want to be blessed, pray about it. Come and just join us over there. We, um, you know, even though we are a business unit, we do devotions uh, twice a day, and it is a blessing. We have people that brought, drop off prayer. We pray for people. We pray for each other, and um, today we're going to actually have John get on up here. He is our um, warehouse manager, and he actually started as a volunteer, but we're going to hear just a, a quick little bit from him. He's going to tell you about what he does, and um, the opportunities that he has daily. All right, here you go, John. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of share with how God uh, brought me to the thrift store. So about five years ago, I suffered some unexpected heart uh, issues. I had a couple stents put in, and uh, it really left me with an uneasy feeling about what I could and couldn't do physically. So uh, after about milking that for about a year, my wife was like, hey, you should go volunteer at the uh, thrift store. And I thought, yeah, I need to get active. So I went out there and uh, it really gave me an opportunity to be active and test myself and see what I could do physically. And uh, 
I was sorting clothes and chatting with Pastor Jim for a few hours a day, and it really helped build my confidence, you know, uh, what I could and couldn't do. And uh, But I'll tell you, um, it was a great idea for her because uh, it gave me an opportunity to see all the awesome treasures that would come in there and, uh, like I said, uh, hang out and chat with really nice people. And uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you, uh, the real treasure, though, that I got uh, from going to the thrift store was the opportunity to meet so many new people and build so many really great relationships, and I'm eternally grateful for that. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're someone like me who uh, is recovering from something, uh, you want to test yourself out, uh, see what you can do if you're trying to get back into the workforce, or you've got extra time on your hands, or maybe the Lord has put it on your heart that, uh, you know, you need to serve and do something outside of yourself. Uh, you know, I, I strongly urge you to come out to the thrift store and see what God has in store for you out there. It's a, it's a lot more than just gently used goods. So. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, John. When, when we selected John, he was super nervous, but he did a great job. All right. Well, with that, uh, get up and meet and greet, and then we'll get Pastor Terry up here. Thank you.
Alrighty then. I know. All right, let me let me tell you some cool things that you can do today. All right. So this is a this is a great time together. We do this three times. We have three services. So you have an opportunity to go to a called a new believers class, but it's foundational of what we believe as Christians. If you haven't done that class, you should go right now, go over that class, and then come back for the second service. By the way, second service is always better than first. Always better than first. Yes, yes it is. Yes, I'm still waking up, and I'm irritated at the whole bunch of you and all that. So I'm a nice pastor if you come second service. All right, so... Uh, just go around the corner there. They have the, the New Believers class. So you get a double whammy. You might actually get saved today if you do that. And if not, don't blame me when you find yourself in a two double hockey sticks on that day. Okay. <laughs> Awkward. All righty then. Okay, very awesome, awesome, awesome. Open your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, verse by verse through the Gospel of Matthew. You should have got one of these when you came in, right? Steps of Peace with God. We'll talk about this as we go through the, our time together. And if, if the message gets boring, you can actually read this. One way in English and one way in Spanish. That's cool. So very cool. All right. Again, if you need a Bible, raise your hand. We'll get your Bible. Matthew chapter 9 is where we're at. Slowly making our way through the Gospel of Matthew. If, you've, if you're trying to catch up, you can always go online and catch the previous messages. Mm -hmm. Father, we love you a lot. Lord, we come away from this crazy world and just for a little while, Lord, to open your word, to listen for your voice, Lord, to see what you want to say to us through your word. You're faithful, Lord. Always, always faithful. So, Lord, just bless this time. Bless your people. Bless your word, Lord. We look to you. Someday soon, Lord, we're going to be home. We're going to see you face to face. But, Lord, you're Emmanuel. God with us right here, right now. So we trust in you, in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen, amen and amen. All right, so we're right. We stopped right in the middle of a section here as we're going through this. If you remember, as Jesus is back in Capernaum, okay, just to kind of remind ourselves of the story, He's back in Capernaum. That's kind of his hometown. Simon Peter's mother-in-law lives there, and they're all kind of, all the disciples are kind of huddled up in the mother-in-law's house, all right? Boy, there's like three jokes you can, you can do there. But uh, as they're there, people are coming from all over because this itinerant preacher is healing people. He's ticking off the religious leaders, and that makes the common person happy, right? They don't like those guys anyways. All right, and, and, uh, and all the healing and all the miracles and all the acceptance, all the joy that is happening. I don't know, some Christians uh, uh, like the chosen film and some don't like that. That's okay. I just love the joy of the moments that they portray because it had to be that way. As here you have Jairus that we saw last time. Jairus' 12-year-old daughter is dying. Before Jesus makes it to the house, she will have died. Can you imagine what that's like, the, the turmoil? But could you imagine the joy of getting your daughter back? Or the gal that had the bleeding issue for all those years. She was completely ostracized from the world and, and uh, you know, just a complete cast down. And now she's been healed. The joy of the joy that would have been there. And he continues to heal. And we stopped right in the middle of that because we ran out of time last time. But we get to verse 27 we're in Matthew chapter 9. Now Jesus departed from there, departed from healing the, the gal. He's still at Capernaum. Jairus' uh, daughter is healed. And so he, he gets from that house, parts from there. Two blind men are following him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. Running to Jesus. Man, if I can just get to Jesus, and they're blind. They hear the crowd coming. They know Jesus is there. Now, what they're saying is, they're saying Messiah. Son of David is a messianic term. In other words, they're saying, Messiah, help us. You're the Messiah. You're the one we talk about, we pray for. We're the one we've been longing for to come. Lord, save us. Have mercy on us. Verse 28, and when they had come into the house... 
the blind man came to him. So they're following him in the house, probably Simon Peter's house, and they said, Jesus said to them, he says, do you believe, listen to what he asked them, do you believe that, that I am able to do this? Do you believe? Do you believe I can do this for you? Yes, Lord, we can, yes. He touched their eyes, and notice what he says. Circle this. Don't miss this. He says, according to your faith, let it be done to you. Their eyes were open, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, see that no one knows it. But they departed and spread the news about him. They went and told everybody. All right. Now, we've already talked about that as far as what. What was it? You know, don't tell anyone. This is just for this season because so many of the crowds are getting so big that at this point, it's super hard for him to go into any town. All right? And he's trying to get them to understand, you think Messiah is going to be coming in on a white horse and, and kicking out the Romans and doing all this. He had to get them to understand Messiah is coming the first time Messiah is coming, and he's coming to be the Savior. He's coming to forgive sins. He's coming to make you understand the kingdom of heaven is now. It's here. And, he's, and, and we'll talk about that as we go through what he's, what he's saying here. Uh, so the crowds are, so don't tell anyone, but they go out and blast it all over. This, is, this has happened over and over again. Last one, he said, don't say it to. The word was interesting because the word is used. He went out and blazed it everywhere. He told everybody. He even told his mother-in-law that he didn't like. He told everybody. Right? But notice what's here. Now, this is, I'm going to pause it for a second because he says here, he says, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you believe? Do you believe? And he says, according to your faith, something really important about believing and trusting in God that changes everything. Do you really believe in God? Let me, let me say it this way. Do you really trust God? I mean, don't, don't answer that too quickly. Do you really trust him when it's not going your way? Do, do you really trust him when things are not happening? This is why so many people spin out of Christianity. Do you really trust him? You know, I've had to, I've had to do this myself. I've had to reason through this. I've told you my story over and over again of the, of the day that I woke up one Sunday. Well, it was a few years ago. I'm the pastor of this church, and, and I woke up, and I said, I don't want to go to church anymore. I don't like church people. I don't like the church. I don't want to go to church anymore. You ever feel like that? Okay, good, two of you have, and the rest of you, the rest of you, it's coming, all right? But how God did that work in my life, to where now, there's no other place I'd rather be right than right here with God's people. I like, I like most of you people, man. It's just an awesome thing of what God is doing. And, but do you believe? Do you trust me? Yes, God, I trust you. Do you trust me? I mean, this is so important, this belief. Um, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Listen to this. Like in John's gospel, he says this. Oh, I love this, that what they asked him. This is in John. If you get over there really fast, John chapter 6, verse, verse 28. Uh, they said to him, what do we do, need to do to do the work of God? What do we need to do to be saved? What, what is the work of God you want us to do, Lord? Now listen to this. Jesus said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him who he sent. What is the work you want us to do? I want you to believe. I want you to trust that's the work that, that I want you to do. But it's not just here. He says a few verses later, he says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never thirst. He who believes in me shall, shall never hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. A few verses later, he says, this is the will of God who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him has everlasting life. And I'll raise him up on the last day. A few verses later, he says, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. If you went through your New Testament and all the times Jesus is speaking, and says, this is what I want. I want you to believe in me. You know, you believe in God. He had to tell the disciples this. You believe in God, believe also in me. Look at my father's house or many mansions. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you, he said in John chapter 14. He said, I want you to believe. I want you to believe in it for now, I want you to believe for that day when we're going to see him face to face. I want you to believe, and this is the one that, that's important. I want you to believe when it's hard. When it's hard. When it's hard to believe in God. This is basic Christianity. Boy, we need this in our foundation of, our, of, of following God. Is this, when it's hard, we've got to believe in him. We've got to trust in him. 
One of the cool things that happened uh, was that yesterday, man, it just all blends together. Yesterday, uh, we had men's breakfast. Uh, you know, Bible and bacon, and it was good. And we finished up first Peter, right? I was there. I think I remember this. First Peter. We're getting ready to go to the, the, the book of James. Looking forward to that. But in the book of James, hold your place here. I want to show you something just to get ahead of the game here a little bit. When it's hard, and it's going to be hard, how do I continue to believe in you, God? How do I, how do I understand that it's going to be okay? I'm going to trust in you. Go to the book of James. Hold your place here. I'm going to come right back. Go to the book of James. And he started off this way. James is the, is the uh, half-brother of Jesus. If you don't know what that is, guys, see you at the next men's breakfast. I'll do a whole introduction on the book of James. But he says this. He says to them, that are dealing with very hard times. They're persecuting Christians. The church is getting, getting really hurt right now uh, when this is written. He says, look, you need to count it all joy, verse 2 of chapter 1. Uh, when, not if, but when you fall into various multicolored trials. When you, when you, when you count it all joy, when, it's going to happen, when you fall into all these trials, knowing Verse 3, knowing by experience, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Knowing that this is doing a work in you. Get on the other side of it. You're going to be okay. This difficulty you're going through, you can believe in him. You can trust in God because God's doing a work. But let that patience, the word patience there can also, in some of your Bibles, it's translated endurance, that steadfastness, that you're not going to give up. You're going to trust in God. That, it will have its perfect work in you. It's going to have that perfect work. Okay, it's doing a work. It's through the difficulties. It's through the hard times that it's doing this work. It's making you stronger in the things of God. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I'm going to trust in you, God. It's so much easier to trust him now than it was early on when all the trials were happening. I didn't know. God, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why, why are you letting this happen? You know. But then we, then we saw him faithful. Early on in our Christian walk, we saw him faithful. My wife, early on, we're, we're fairly new Christians. Our kids are growing up. And, and uh, I'm working full time and I'm pastoring full time and I'm gone all the time, and my wife is, my wife is working full-time. And it was almost audible. The Lord told us both that my wife needed to stay home and be with the kids. They're, they're coming home. They're empty nesters, right? And so uh, empty nesters. Well, now we're into empty nesters. Oh, that's something different. Oh, it's a glorious day. But this is when they were little, right? <laughs> they, were, they were, what do they call them, Tur uh, latchkey kids. Yeah, that's what they were. Oh, I got excited. I'm, woo, my kids are out. I'm happy. But uh, <laughs> leave it alone. All right, so, but, uh, so, he told, so he was really clear she needed to quit her job and stay home. We're going to file bankruptcy. We have to file bankruptcy. There's no way to do this. All right, on paper, it's totally, we file bankruptcy. I don't have enough money to survive this thing. We need to, so, and so I write this whole thing out, and I'm praying, God, what do you want us to do? I, I'll file bankruptcy. I already, I call a lawyer, figure out how to do this, file bankruptcy. And, uh, and, the, and it's almost audible. It was this, and this is not good advice from the world, but it's good advice from God. He said, throw that paper away. You know, you're going to trust in me. I don't know how it happened. We never missed a payment. We never, we never, the only, the only thing I did is I turned in the truck that we had. I had a truck and I turned it in and so they didn't repossess it. I turned in that truck and I still had to make the payments on it. How is that? This world's all screwed up. All right. So, but I, but God, I saw God work over and over again. So the next time something hard came, it's like, well, he was faithful then. He'll be faithful now. The next thing, hard thing came, he was faithful. He been, and now it's like, man, God's got this. It's hard right now. No, it's not. It's easy. God's easy. Let me you, you think this is hard? Let me tell you stories where I've seen God work over and over again. So what is God doing? He's teaching us. It's like muscles, you know, when you used to work out. Obviously, you don't anymore. It's just look in the mirror. But when you used to work out, you know, the, the more you work out, the more you can lift. And the more you, you look good, all right? Obviously, I don't do it anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. That's stupid. All right, but... but uh, but here's the thing is that faith muscle that God gives you. 
Now, I don't know what you're doing, God, in the process of this, trying to believe in you. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally and without reproach, and it'll be given to him. Now, let him ask in faith without doubting. He who doubts is like the wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Not that, not, don't let that man suppose that he'll receive anything from the Lord because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Look, you lack wisdom. You lack wisdom, ask God. But you got to trust him. You got to trust him. You got to believe. This is so important, man. I could spend another 20 minutes on this topic. But man, if we don't, and, and we see, this is a basic concept of Christianity. You got to believe in God. Okay, I get that, all right? Okay, let's, let's flip that around. You got to trust in God when it's hard. You got to trust in God when things aren't going your way. You got to trust in God when you think you could do it better. And there's times I've told God, Lord, Lord I can, if you just do what I ask you to do, life would be so much better and I could really spread the kingdom so much more. I could do so much more. Give me these lottery numbers, all right? If you give me these lottery numbers, man, I'll, bla man, I'll, I'll put on the side of my new mobile home, the, my, new, my, loop, my new go see the world home. I'll put on, Jesus loves you. I'll put it on the side of it. Give it to me, Lord. I just did that here. Can I tell you this? I'll tell you first service because it is what it is. But, but uh, I was in California. We're taking care of my parents. And um, that's been, uh, it's been a joy to spend time with my parents. But, but, uh, but t t they have the lottery there. So, so you know what? Can I tell you this? Just, I got a little weak there. It's like a billion dollars or something. It was a lot of money. So, so I mean, I, but I didn't do that. What I did is those little scratchy ones. You guys know about this stuff. I didn't know about this stuff. Those little scratchy ones. You get, I want money right now. So I asked the guy, I said, hey, so what, which one should I get? He goes, I can't tell you that. I go, well, which one is probably going to win? Give me one of those. He says, okay. So I started scratching. He goes, you don't need to scratch it. You just got to put it under this little light. Okay, so, okay. So I put it on the light. Guess, guess what? I spent 10 bucks on that thing. Guess how much I won? Guess how much I won? Not even a dollar. Jeez, I thought you loved me. Man. Lose, <laughs> I know. That's all right. If you're going up to Idaho to get tickets because of the lottery, come talk to me, all right? I can give you 10 bucks. But, uh, so, <laughs> oh, don't judge me. You Christians are so judgmental. So what? If I win, you're going to envy me, so shut your face, all right? So, but here's the thing now. So that's, so, um, in the book of James, I won't go over there, all of that, but, but he says later on, he says, look, you, you, you have not because you ask not. Because you ask, you ask amiss to spend it on your own self. And he, he really gets on their case about, about when you're praying, you don't get what you ask for. Why? Because you're selfish, that's why. And this belief is, I'm going to trust in you, God. I'm going to follow you, God. I can't be selfish. I've got to say, Lord, I want i got to be like John the Baptist. What do you say? I must decrease, he must increase. I'm going to trust in you when it's hard. All of this, because look, look how important this is. And you're going to see this over and over again. He says, look, do you believe I can do this? Do you believe? Yes, we believe. All right, then according to your faith. If you're lying, it ain't going to happen. According to your faith, according to your belief, Lord, do you, do you trust in me? Yes, I trust in you, Lord. Okay, now step out. Now do that hard thing. Talk to that person that's hard. Go do that hard thing. Lord, help us in this. Over and over again, they went out, behold, and back in, back in uh, Matthew's gospel, they went out, and behold, they brought him a man that was mute and demon-possessed, and, and the demon was cast out, and the mute spoke, and the multitudes marveled. Man, this never been seen like this before in Israel. We've never seen anything like this. But those religious leaders, the Pharisees, ah, he cast out demons by the, ru by the ruler of the demons. And that's what religion will do to you. You know, he's not doing it our way. He don't believe the way. I think, uh, you know what, I don't think this, I know this. The closer I get to Jesus, let me say this to you, Christian. The closer I get to Jesus, the less legalistic I become. The further I get away from Jesus, the more legalistic I am. Because I'm doing my own religion. You know, you got to live up to my expectations. You got to do this. And the closer I get to Jesus, the more I say, I say, you know what? It's not about legalism. It's about love. If you just see Jesus, he loves you. He's passionately in love with you. 
Lord, help us in this. Help us to understand some of these things. Now, Jesus was about, went about all the cities and the villages, all these areas, teaching the kingdom of God and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. I love that. The gospel of the kingdom. Healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He's preaching the gospel. The good news. The good news. What is the good news? Is the good news is you're going to hell because you don't believe in the right things? Is that the good? That's not good news. Here's the good news. There's a God that loves you. That loves you so much. That died upon that cross for you. He gave his life for you. So much that there's a day coming, and it's even here right now, that the kingdom of heaven is right now, right here. What does that mean? That means he walks with you today. That means he'll guide you today. It's not, it's not something pie in the sky, wait for, wait for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is here right now, right here, right now. Now, now I know the new age has grabbed this and ran with it and with the, you know, the whole secret and all that, all that stuff. They've taken a precious concept and they perverted it so you can use it so you, don't, you, don't, you have not because you ask not because you ask for your own miss, as James says, it's because you're selfish. I want to use it for, for, for my glory. Hallelujah, me, you know. Instead of saying this, God, I want to do this because I want to follow you. And you know what? There's such joy in this journey when we do that. The kingdom of heaven. Jesus looked at them and says, the kingdom of heaven is now. The kingdom of heaven is here. Jesus came to the Galilee preaching the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is in Mark's gospel. How do I receive it? How do I live in this this moment. All right, I'm going to believe in you. I'm going to trust in you, God. All right, so how do I live in this moment of allowing you to use my life for whatever you have for us? He says this, Mark chapter 1, he says, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, believe in the gospel. Turn away from your sins. They're not helping you anyways. They're not helping you anyways. How's that helping you? You know, isn't a nice... Isn't it nice waking up and not being hung over? Isn't it nice waking up and not worrying? I, there was times, i just tell you, there was times that, that I'd wake up and I had these little moments where I'd think, you know what, and this is horrible. This is horrible. I don't brag about this. I'm ashamed of this. I'd wake up and I, and I, in the morning and I'd, I'd think, you know what, I was driving last night, you know, and I don't remember what happened. And I look out, I looked out and to make sure the car's still out there and make sure it's not wrecked. You know. Praise God he saved me. I'd be in prison. Praise God he saved me. I'd I'd, I'd hurt more people. You know. Praise God. Praise God. I mean, maybe you weren't that bad. Maybe you didn't go that deep. But the love of Christ is deeper still. It doesn't matter how deep you go. He's there and he pulls you out of that. I love this. He pulls you out of this miry pit and sets your foot on a solid rock. Thank you, God, for that. He saved so many of us. What do we have to say? We have to say, thank you, God, for loving us, for saving us. The kingdom of heaven is now. In other words, you're going to walk with us every day. And when I'm tempted to go back into the world, man, the Spirit of God is right there, drawing me back to him, drawing me back to him. Kingdom of heaven. How do I, how do I live in this belief? Live in this. Well, repent. Return from your sins. Turn to God. Believe in him. It's not done yet because we have a job to do. He saw the multitudes. Look at verse 36. He saw the multitudes and he was, notice this. Lord, make this, make this who we are. They were, he was moved with compassion for them. He was moved with compassion. Right? Moved to action. Compassion Without action is a complete waste of that emotion. You have compassion, but you do nothing. You know, ask God for wisdom on how to do something. There's, there's so much need in this world. There's so many opportunities. And so I want to do something, you know, that somebody was asking me the other day about, about Operator's Christmas Child and, and uh, Samaritan's Purse and all that. And, I, and I was, another pastor, and I was telling him, you know what, I got to tell you this straight up. We looked at all the different ways, and there's good ways to help people. But we're looking at all the ways to do missions, all the different ways. And for us, that was the biggest bang for the buck. Okay, I have limited resources. I have, we have limited resources in this church. We have limited resources. In those resources, what's, where, where can we affect the most people? And we ran across that one and said, that one's it. 
And that was it. It's not just that, that we say that's the, the, that we know that because they tell us that. No, it's because we've seen it. We've been on the, we've been on the mission field. We, one of our gals uh, is, in fact, we'll, we'll bring her up here uh, probably in a week, maybe a couple weeks, whatever it is. And um, is she in here? When are, you, when are you leaving? Were you in, you're still in here? Well, she already left, didn't she? Oh, well. Okay. It's June. Okay, so when, okay, so she, she, and you went on a mission trip, didn't you? Yeah, see, I remember that. Nanu, Nanu, bless you. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> all right, so, but no, they're going, she's going to go uh, on Operation Christmas Child and, and do, and out, hand out the boxes and all that and see what's going on, all right? So, and again, it's, it's a little side note there. We, we want to do what the very most we can with the resources that God has given us, all right? What does that have to do with this? It has a lot to do with the compassion. I have compassion. I don't know. I, there's two bits, too big. What can I do? I can do a little bit. I can make a difference. I can make a difference to that refugees that are coming in and they have no shoes. I can make a difference there. I have a thrift store. God blesses us with a thrift store. I can get some shoes. I, so we have piles of shoes. When they come in, I, I, always, I pull them aside, say, come here, come here. You know, that's kind of interesting. Some of them, it's raining outside. They have sandals on. Their socks are wet. Their sandals are wet. And I say, hey, come over here. Uh, you know, you can have any shoes, see if they fit you. If they don't, let me know. Let me know what size you are. I'll make sure I get shoes for you next week. And these are really nice shoes. And I go, oh, well, I like my sandals. <laughs> it's raining outside and your feet are all wet. Yeah, but my feet look good, you know. <laughs> okay, well, cool. Still take those boots. They look good on you. All right, so, so he says he had compassion for them. Now, listen to what he says, and I'll, I'll quit with this. He says, but they were weary they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. He said to his disciples, The harvest is truly plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors in his harvest field. This is something he said over and over again. They had understood this, this word picture right here. They've seen, they've seen the, the, those out there in the harvest field. In Luke chapter 10, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest and send out laborers into his harvest field. John chapter 4, uh, do not say there are still four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes. Now, this was at Samaria, where th these people believe everything wrong. This is like one of the really bad towns if you're a religious person. Th here they come running towards Jesus. He says, don't tell me that there's four months for the harvest. He says, look up right now. Look up, lift up your eyes for the, for the, for the fields, for they are already white for harvest. Look, look, it's all around you. It's all around you. See, I believe in you, God. I'm going to trust in you when it's hard. I'm going to trust in, in you when it's hard. Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know that I'm going to live in the gospel of the kingdom, meaning, God, I need your help in this. It's supernatural, and he gives us power to do this now. To do what? To do what? The harvest is plentiful. The harvest is plentiful. Well, how do I be part of the harvest field? Just ask God to show you. you know, I give you this. Now, this is for you to give out, but it's for you to read first. Right? Basic steps to peace with God. In fact, I want to do this. Um, it's only two minutes long. It's about two minutes and 30 seconds. Open your heart. Watch the screen. Now, you can't change your past, but you can determine your destiny by deciding for Christ. But Christ can change your past. He died on the cross so that all the sins you've ever committed, all the things you've ever done wrong, are forgiven. What do you have to do? You have to repent of your sins. That means to be willing to change your way of living. You may have no power to do it. But if you surrender to Christ, he'll give you the power. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. Come to Christ. He will give you a new strength and a new power and a new joy and a new peace and a purpose for living. Every person that ever lived has to make the same choice. It's either the world and its pleasures and its gods or it's Christ. Which is it for you? Oh yes, there's pleasure in sin for a short time. But it's soon over. The hangover comes. 
and there's nothing you can do about it. Choose Christ and there'll never be a hangover except joy and peace. And it's an urgent decision because to delay makes the right decision harder. Indecision in itself is a choice. If you have a ticket for a flight to Atlanta tonight and can't decide whether to go or not, if you wait past the departure time, the choice will have been made. The plane will take off without you. Time decides if you will not. And time always decides against you. There's a lonely arena in the depths of your heart where the greatest battle of life must be fought alone. That's your decision about Christ. Your parents can't make it for you. The church can't make it for you. Your friends can't make it for you. Your girlfriend, your boyfriend can't make it for you. You have to make it yourself. And your decision, yes or no, will decide where you'll be a hundred years from now. I believe that none of you are here by accident. I believe that you're here on this particular night because this is the night that you are to meet God in a new way and receive him into your heart. If you're not sure that you're ready to meet God, if you're not sure you're going to heaven and you're not sure that your sins are forgiven, you come and make him Lord and Savior of your life. Love that. Love that. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to pray with you because it all begins with what we're talking about. It all begins with belief. I'm going to trust in you, God. Maybe you need to say a prayer for the very first time. Maybe you need to say a prayer. Uh, you need to reiterate it. Lord, I believe in you. I trust in you. Help me to follow you. Lord, I want to live in the power of following you, of trusting in you, even when it's hard. Lord, you know us. You know the things that we struggle with. Lord, you know each person in this room. Lord, you know, you know those that are yours and you know those, Lord, that are, that are struggling right now. Lord, it's hard sometimes following you. It's hard sometimes. This world throws hard stuff at us. But Lord, I pray for each person in this room, Lord, that we wouldn't just go through the motions, Lord. But today would be the day that we would say, the Lord, we're yours. We're following you. We're trusting in you. And if that's you between you and God right now, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Between you and God right now, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Lord, I believe in you. Help me to follow you. I give you all that I am. Lord, help me. I receive you as Lord and Savior. Now help me to follow you. Jesus' name. Lord, you made it that simple. You never gave us a formula prayer, but you did say all that would come to you, you would never, you'd never push away. You're faithful, Lord. Thank you for this family. Thank you for the things that we're learning together. Thank you, Lord, for a safe place, Lord. Always keep this a safe place for us to learn about you. Don't let us judge one another, hurt one another. Lord, keep us safe. We love you. We really, really do. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand together. Oh God, how I need
how I need you, how we all need you. Lord, show us the way. Show us the way for us to take, Lord, into your arms, in your steps. Lord, in our own power, we fail, we stumble, we fall. But Lord, you are there to pick us up, to set us back on the path and walk alongside us. We thank you for that, Jesus. And Lord, give us your love your strength, your salvation today. We love you. We worship you and praise you this morning. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you do need prayer, our prayer team is going to be right here in front of the stage. So please feel free to come forward. As always, communion available under the cross up front as well. And with that, may God bless you and keep you. And you go in peace as you follow Jesus this week.